Welcome to our series, Moving America Forward. Each week we'll be focusing on America's entrepreneurs as they take us to new roads, new opportunities, new ways to fill the gaps left by today's failing companies. Our series will be looking at that and a lot more. So come with me and watch as the entrepreneurs of our nation move into the future. And I'm Doug Llewellyn here in our studios in Los Angeles with our guest who is the president of Guidance Aviation located in Prescott, Arizona. I'd like you to meet him now. His name is John Stonecipher. John, welcome. Nice to have you here. Thank you. You know, I want to point out that you were awarded the prestigious title of Business Person of the Year by the U.S. Small Business Administration last year. That's an extraordinary honor. It was an incredible honor and an amazing experience. We were very well received in Washington, D.C. Well, we're going to find out why. But first, let me point out the little a while ago, you had a chance to answer some questions from William Shatner. So let's pause, take a look at a brief portion of that and see how it went. Okay, let's watch. I know that being successful in business today is not easy. Why don't you briefly describe what you do and what sets you apart from others in your field? And do you feel your business is helping to move America forward? Well, Mr. Shatner, Guidance Aviation has partnered with colleges of like mind those that are career focused. And due to the high percentage of veterans that we serve, we've comprised our education and support teams of mostly veterans to further our mission of graduating and placing competent helicopter pilots into an extremely rewarding career where the demand is great. Uh, we are the nation's leading provider of helicopter pilots to our industry, and that, Mr. Shatner, is how Guidance Aviation is moving America forward. You know, this is really an amazing story about a company that has developed into so much more than just a flight training school. It's, a, it's really a rewarding program that they have developed. John, tell me, in your estimation, what do you think it is that makes Guidance Aviation so unique? I think a large part of it is the process. Um, I think the way we train pilots with very tangible benchmarks. Um, and we have very clear expectations of both our staff and of our students within the program. Why, what I think is so interesting here, you're not just a flight training program where somebody goes to an airport and learns how to fly. You've set up a two-year program with schools. They go to actually, they're, they're taking classes at community colleges as well as classes out at your facility. How did you work all of that out? Well, Guidance Aviation, is a, uh, our programs are two-year collegiate career school programs. Right. Uh, there's, a, there's a job on the back end. And we've partnered with two colleges, one in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and another community college in uh, Yavapai County, Prescott, Arizona. And uh, we've worked very, very hard to create college rigor in the academics as well as integrating both simulation and the flight portions of the flight training. And we complete all of the professional certificates in two years. It is, I mean, it is a full-time two-year program, right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's an academy-style learning. There are no breaks. I mean, it's not easy to learn how to be a helicopter pilot. Though, uh, no, it's not. I, for one, can tell you it's very difficult to become a helicopter pilot. It requires a lot of concentration, uh, strong motor skills, and, of course, uh, there's a considerable amount of academics involved as well. You know, what I found interesting is that what you're teaching, the pilots you're teaching, you, most, of, most of us think, you know, the great helicopter pilots are in the military, and most of them come, or at least used to come out of the military. But it's almost more difficult to fly the smaller helicopters that like the police use, uh, traffic, you know, uh, hospitals and things like that. It's tricky flying those planes. Frankly, the smaller the helicopter, the more difficult it is to fly. The motor skill requirement in the smaller machines, because of the weight constraints on the, on the aircraft, there's less stability augmentation or equipment to stabilize that aircraft. Right. So the pilots, it's hands-on, seat-of-the-pants flying in helicopters. And, and that sets, sets the civilian flying aside from military flying. And there's no automatic pilot on helicopters? Not in the lighter ones, no. You know, let me ask you a little bit about why you, you have headquartered your operation in Prescott, Arizona. There's a real big advantage to being there, and what is it? That's correct. We began 16 years ago. We pioneered high-altitude training in light helicopters. Uh, the field elevation in Prescott's above 5,000 feet, and that actually creates a niche or a, a, a loggable portion of a pilot's logbook, a, a very valuable piece of their flight experience. And I have always felt that if you train a pilot in the most challenging of environments, they take that skill set with them, and even if they bring it down to lower elevations, such as sea level, they're a more conservative and more reliable pilot. And what makes it higher to fly, you know, harder to fly at these higher elevations? Uh, engine performance is affected by thinner air. Uh, just as we as human beings are affected, the higher we go in altitude, the more difficult it becomes for right. us to run, for example. Uh, engine aspiration 
exploration is, is a challenge, and the aerodynamics of the airfoils are when also impeded by thin air. What, what do you mean by that? How the engine breathes, the intake cycle of the engine, it, it, it has less air and thereby less performance at altitude. Okay, I'm learning myself a little bit about this. One other thing I think that's really kind of fascinating is that I, I know this kind of education is not cheap. But there's a real reward at the end of it because this is a field where there is a lot of employment. No, that, absolutely. In fact, uh, the exiting of the Vietnam era pilots, uh, they're all retiring at this point in time. Right. Uh, China has opened up their airspace uh, below 10,000 feet, so we have an awful lot of pilots moving themselves overseas into China and the Middle East, um, as well as Brazil. And so our, our pilot population in the United States is being depleted, and in the meanwhile, we have fewer and fewer civilian pilots going into industry, and our military pilots are being retained for longer periods of time because of the cost and sophistication of equipment equipment that they fly. So the, the uh, civilian demand for helicopter pilots truly is at an all-time high. Yeah. So in, in essence, who are your students? Who, who, who takes these courses? Currently about 80% of our students are veterans using their, uh, their veterans benefit as they exit the military and about 20% of our civilians. And that's flip-flopped from about five or six years ago uh, prior to the decline in our economy. We were 90% civilians and 10% veterans. But today, because the civilian money is so difficult to come by and the veterans have a benefit. Uh, they've been exercising their benefit and we're literally we're replenishing the industry which was once, once predominantly veterans with veterans once again which is a good fit because it's a veteran culture. Uh, most helicopter operations are veteran owned and operated. Talk to me about this program. I, it's a, it's a two-year program. Part of it, a good chunk of it is in the classroom. You have simulators that you've designed. Right. Yeah, it, it, this, this falls back on the uniqueness of guidance aviation. It's a process of training. We, we have uh, hired career educators, and in the development of the process of training, there is classroom lecture where you assimilate the information, you take that information, and you, and you learn to fly in a simulator. And uh, we're in a little niche market, so there wasn't a real strong uh, number of simulators to be had out in industry. So we've worked in-house to develop our own simulators. Uh, and those devices we train in a very safe environment. Obviously we're doing that indoors inside of a building. On the ground. On the ground. <laughs> and, 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 and in conducting or in the process of that training, that's where we learn to fly. Then our pilots take that skill set that they learn in the simulator out to the aircraft and they practice out in the flight environment. So it reduces the number of flight hours. Helicopters are extremely expensive to operate. And and you learn the processes in the simulator in the controlled environment. You go out and practice it. Fewer hours means less cost and more proficient pilots. And that's very unique to guidance aviation and, frankly, the United States military. Uh, you find the Army and, and other branches of the service do exactly the same thing. You know, something else is that your staff, I mean, you've got like 100, 100 instructors for 200 students, and how many helicopters do you have? Actually, we have about 50 instructors, 108 employees, 200 students. Uh, today we've got 25 helicopters and three support airplanes that also support our operations, so 28 aircraft in total. And what's the normal progression for a student when they finish your program? What, I mean, they're not qualified well, they're qualified to fly, but they, it's hard. They still have to do other things before they get a job, right? Yeah, I, I kind of break this down for you. Predominantly, the way this works is a pilot in the second semester obtains a, a private pilot certificate. Okay. In their third semester, they acquire an instrument rating, allowing them to fly solely by reference to the instruments in the cockpit, in the clouds, if you will. By their fifth semester, they're a commercially rated pilot, and in their sixth semester, they hold two flight instructor certificates, uh, a VFR, Visual Flight Rules Instructor Certificate, and an Instrument Flight inst uh, Instructor Certificate. At that point, they're eligible for employment under close supervision within our organization, for example, as an intern flight instructor. They spend a year and a half to two years as an intern flight instructor before they, we've prepared them to move on to industry, right. and then they go out to firefighting, emergency medical service, law enforcement, heli skiing, uh, um, exploration, oil and gas industry is a huge employer of our graduates. And right now we enjoy a, a greater than 90% placement rate of those pilots that come out of our program. So we've been, been very successful, especially considering it's a two-year degree program and the median income just in our state is Arizona is about $85,000. So uh, the, the, the return on your investment in this education is good. Well, you know, I know that in addition to your headquarters, you know, in Arizona, you also have a facility that you've opened in Louisiana. Why there? We, we opened in Baton Rouge, Louisiana because of the marine environment. We wanted our pilots to have an experience uh, dealing with, with the marine layer, the marine weather, that environment. It's also important for us to try to uh, recruit 
from the local uh, demographic, if you will. If you hire folks from, from the Gulf region, they tend to stay in the Gulf region and seek employment in the Gulf region. And rather than having pilots come from Nebraska to Arizona to train, they go down to the Gulf, they spend six or eight months there to get their initial work experience only to move back to Nebraska. And that's very challenging for their operators, very costly for the operators, because it costs them to, to, to do specific training and make and models. Uh, and, of the aircraft. And why is there so much work in that area? Um, because of all of the oil and gas industry e explosion. Basically, I mean, what, what, we do, what, what they do down there is they support the oil rigs. The helicopters are the, the most efficient means of Taking transportation. Taking everybody in and out to the, to the rigs? You bet. People, supplies, equipment. Um, yeah. you, you know, ferry boats also support the rigs, but the helicopter is the primary tool to support the rigs. And we've got currently close to a million flights a year that occur in the Gulf of Mexico. One other quick question off the top of my head. What, what, is, what can a helicopter pilot make when they're, you know, out in, they're working in industry? When they finally get out to industry, entry-level pilots during their internship make close to $40,000 a year within our organization. That varies state to state based on cost of living. Right. Uh, we have a relatively low cost of living in Prescott, Arizona. Um, upon completion of their internship, they should be making upwards of sixty, dollars and uh, the median income in Arizona, $85,000 a year. And pretty much cap out before you go into a management position at the low six figures, $120,000, $125,000 a year. And helicopters pilots can continue working for a long time, can't they? Absolutely. There's no cap on, there's no age restriction like you're familiar with in the airlines. Yeah. As long as you can continue to pass a second class medical certificate, you can continue to fly. I have a good friend up in uh, Montana who flies Glacier Park. He's in his 80s now and he continues to operate a single pilot air, uh, air carrier on-demand charter service flying tours of Glacier Park. It's just such a great story. And you don't think of how many areas there are where, where pilots can fly. You know, you go to Hawaii, you can go to helicopter tours around Hawaii. It's all over the place. What a great story indeed. Thank, Thank you. you so much for telling us about it. Thank you, Doug. This organization represents companies across our great nation that embody the spirit, dedication, know-how, and can-do attitude, which has made America the great nation that it is today. And now, let's present the Keeping America Strong Award. Now it's my honor to present this prestigious award to John Stonecipher, the president and CEO of Guidance Aviation of Prescott, Arizona, for the outstanding work his firm is doing to help keep moving America forward. John, it's a pleasure to give this to you. Congratulations. Doug, thank you very much, and, and I accept this. It's a great honor on behalf of all of my employees, my students, both civilians and veterans alike. Um, I, I'm just very blessed to be in an industry that I absolutely love. And, uh, and this gives me great satisfaction <laughs> to take this home. So thank you, sir. You're so welcome. I'm William Shatner. And for all of us at Moving America Forward, thanks for watching.